Good afternoon and welcome to Hope for the Harvest Ministries. We are based in the United States of America. This is Prophet Charles Hollowell coming to you with a fresh word from the Lord. You know, the Lord quickens us from time to time. And, and oftentimes it's normally when we're busy doing something or we're involved in some activity or or just getting on with the daily activities and chores of life that God really wants to interrupt our day and quicken us with something that he knows we're going to need, if not at that moment, at a moment a little bit later on. And that's what happened with me today. My wife and I were out shopping, and all of a sudden that word quicken just jumped into my spirit and I couldn't shake it off, and it was like I couldn't wait to get home. And, and find out where the Lord was leading. And now, it's time to share that with you. The first scripture comes from the book of John, chapter 16, verses 7 and 8. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. The word that quickened in my spirit was expedient. It seems like every time we see Jesus getting ready to have a very intimate moment in teaching his disciples, that he's always going to be speaking about kingdom. Kingdom principles and the kingdom that, uh, that God wants to form on this earth and bring restoration back. And so we have to really look at when we're studying the word of God in, in that it is a kingdom principle, not some type of democracy or bring it down to our level because the teachings of God, even though they are simple, there is some profound depth in them. That word expedient in the Greek means to bear together. And when I read that, to bear together, that's a union. That's a partnership right there. That it's something that's going to take place that is in and of myself. Something that is going to join with me for the work and the calling that God has. It also means to bring together. It's almost like Jesus is saying there is a completion that needs to take place in this transition because without it, you're not going to be able to experience the fullness of the grace that he has for us. It also means to be profitable. So it's something that is going to bring profit into our lives. And we know that uh, when we start to study things about profit, profitability, we see those things in, in light of not what so much what I can get or how much I can attain, but what God is duplicating, what God is reproducing. Jesus said that I will not do anything or say anything unless I hear it from the Father. And then he would speak those same exact words to his disciples. He would reproduce in them what the Father was putting in Jesus. And this is what Jesus is telling us, is that he, he's preparing them, saying, look, I'm not going to be here in a physical body, but I'm going to bring together a union, a completeness that establishes me at the right-hand throne of the authority, which has sealed the deal over death, sin, and the grave, and brought restoration to the earth through salvation and profession in the, in the, in the name of Jesus Christ. And that while he is in that place of authority, there is a comforter that is going to come to bear with us the call that God has placed upon our lives. And then we start to look at, okay, what exactly is it? We know that there is something that is coming together that is going to complete the work that Christ has. And what is the definition of that? It's found in a key word. In verse 8, reprove. Reprove means to break down indifference. 
It means to bring conviction of sin. It means to bring warnings of God's judgment that is coming upon this earth. These are the three very main principles that we have got to understand in the times that we're living in right now because there is much indifference. And there is no conviction of sin in this world. And God's judgment is coming. This is what Jesus gave his life for. This is what he laid it down for that you and I might escape the indifference of the world. Understand the conviction of the Holy Spirit that we may live a life that is holy and pure unto God. And that through the urgency of the coming judgment of God, we would bear witness to His grace and mercy and preach the plan of salvation. It's amazing that when Jesus talks, a lot of times He's talking about future events. Sometimes when we're hearing things, we're hearing things in our own little comfort zones, in our own little boxes. And in our own interpretations. And we never really get outside of them to see the depth that Christ is trying to get to us. So why is it so expedient? What thing is going to take place that is, that is going to be a union to help me live a successful and profitable life in Christ? What is that thing? We go to John chapter 6. Verse 63. This is a setup and an explanation of a principle that God has that is going to be the glue, if you will, to solidify that union. And we have to understand this principle first. A lot of times what we want to do is we want to look at the power of God and the power of His Word, His glory, and all these other things. And yet we're not having the foundation that we need to truly understand the work and the gifts of the Spirit of God. This is the premise, the foundation, by which everything else hangs on. The Word says, It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. And they are life. We have got to understand that the quickening is the Spirit of God that makes us alive. In the Greek it talks about being vitalized. Which vitalized means a capacity for survival. Christ knew that without the Spirit of God, our survival was at stake. Our faith was at stake. And all of us can attest to times in our lives when we have walked away from the Lord, walked away from the leading of His Holy Spirit, and paid the price. Because Instantly, life was taken away from us. The things that used to excite us and the things that used to drive us to, to, to dream of God and, and, and to have visions of ministry and, and to see all the wonderful things that Christ did, somehow it's faded and taken with it the joy of our salvation. You see, it is the Spirit of God, His Word, that quickens us. Every time that you sit down and you read His Holy Word, or you are listening to His Word, something inside you must quicken and give you life. It must reproduce what He's saying into your life for your very survival. 
Once we understand that the word being established in our life is first and foremost, then we can begin to understand the gifts and the callings that come with the word. It's almost like the word is the tool belt. And the gifts of the Spirit are the different tools within that tool belt. It accompanies the Word. So let's talk about the Spirit. We find that in a very, very familiar passage. We preach it all the time, and every time that it's preached, it's always preached about power. And we always seem to want to key in on that. And my question is, if we have all this power, why are things not changing? Why are our surroundings still staying the same? Because we've misguided and misdirected the power that God has for us. We look at Acts, the first chapter, verse 8. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in all Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the world. That power, we all know, means a miraculous power, uh, ability, abundance, strength. But what is the focus of that power that Jesus is trying to get them to understand? What is the quickening of the word that we need for this day and for this hour? You see, whenever God starts to speak about, I'm going away, there's an anticipation that, hey, that kingdom must be coming shortly. If he's going away, then the prophecies of his word and the things that he has spoken to us about the kingdom being established, those things must be coming to pass. And we get so caught up in wanting to see the power of God come in and completely transform this world. And what Christ was saying is, instead of concerning yourselves with the time of the coming of the kingdom... He instructed his disciples to be witnesses to the uttermost parts of the earth. We are the witnesses of Christ through our confession of faith. And because of that, he has given his Holy Spirit to bear with us the witness of that plan of salvation to every person we come into contact with so that we can break down the indifferences and allow the Holy Spirit to bring the conviction of sin with the urgency of knowing that God's judgment is soon upon us. This earth is shaking and the pains of it are very evident in this world today. And yes, he has said that by these signs you will see my kingdom is near. And yes, he has said, be watchful, be prayerful, be reverent for my coming. But in that time, be about my father's business. We are so consumed with revival. We are so consumed with the glory of God. We're so consumed with the manifestations of God's Spirit and His presence that we have lost our effectiveness to witness because it is the witness of Christ Jesus our Lord that will bring forth the quickening of the Holy Spirit to transform and change people's lives. I encourage you, I exhort you in the name of Jesus Christ. Take the power of the Word of God.
and preach its truth in this hour. For the coming of God's judgment is soon upon us. May God bless and keep you. In Jesus' holy, precious name.